What's up, y'all? I wanted to do a video on Lori style deadbolts. I'm gonna put the picture up here. I've just posted this in the community post. We had a call as as typical, and like I said in the community post, I knew immediately what it more than likely was because the alarm tech was putting in one of their piece of crap. I mean, one of their uh, electronic locks for the door and the caller the homeowner said that they couldn't get it off the door so could we come help and my immediate thought was it's got to be a lorry deadbolt if they can't figure it out sure enough it was and that was the picture of it that i put in the community post and it made me realize when a couple of people said they're not familiar with them hey i might as well do a video i did do a search on my own channel you can do a search on my channel by typing out se lock and key all together and then whatever so se lock and key quick set and it'll bring you 53,000 videos but that's how to search for videos and always don't forget to change your settings to 1080p because that's always what we film in and youtube will kick it down sometimes to to terrible quality video so let's go ahead and take a look at the lori style deadbolts so in case you aren't familiar with them which many locksmiths are uh, you will be if you run up on it and don't uh, do what the alarm tech guy did to that one. So let's take a look at them and then we're going to install them. And I'm going to mention a couple of tips and tricks that I've found maybe over the years that will help you put them in. Because they are a little bit tickier uh, to put in. But as a locksmith, they're really good deadbolts. Really good kind of grade one deadbolts. And the flexibility of using whatever cylinders you would like. Any keyway you can get more to cylinders. And you'll notice, I'll go ahead and mention it now, inch and an eighth. I prefer using the inch and an eighth. The inch cylinders will work, but on an inch and three quarter door, it makes it, it makes it like suck in a little bit, which does protect the cylinder a little bit more, but it also makes it harder to install. So inch and an eighth, uh, mortar cylinders are best for this. And of course they're available in whatever keyway. So if somebody needs a high security deadbolt, you can get two Asa or Medico or whatever cylinders as long as they have an Adams Wright cam or a Lori cam. And I'm going to put a picture up of that as well in a minute because I don't really use those. I just use Adams Wright cams or whatever. But let's take a look at the deadbolts and then we're going to go put them on. And I'm going to show you uh, that. Okay, Lori style deadbolts. This is the basis of a Lori style deadbolt. Uh, I usually buy the Ilco. I don't. Even, I don't even know offhand. I don't think actual Lori originals are still around, but they may be. Uh, I don't think they are though. There's a handful of different ones out there. Uh, this, uh, I guess, the design of it was so loosely protected by a copyright or whatever. The patent expired. I don't know. But uh, dozens of decorative hardware makers. The one I posted a picture of had brass something cylinders in it. it was like the name brand of this decorative hardware company i've seen them by m tech i've seen them by two or three other just like specialty companies so what they probably do is order the deadbolt and then put their own branded cylinders in i don't know but i get the ilco single cylinder and double cylinder now you can use double cylinder deadbolts and use a thumb turn on the inside a mortise thumb turn however they're a little bit difficult to deal with so if you're gonna be doing these then it's best to have single and double but of course they come with four different latches you've got the drive-in now i have mentioned on this channel that i can't stand drive-in latches unless you have to use them for a reason however the lorries are pretty dang decent they're pretty dang decent it's a little bit bigger than a one inch hole so when you drill your one inch hole you do have to kind of chamfer it just a bit to get it in and then like use a wood block to to force it in but two and three eighths two and three quarter and then the standard ones now ilco deadbolts for a while came uh they come less laps so you buy the deadbolt and then you got to buy the latches and then of course you buy whatever mortar cylinder you have in the box with the deadbolt we're going to take out the single cylinder first right here and nowadays they come with this tailpiece and instructions on how to assemble it. I'm assuming it's because that tailpiece poked holes in the boxes or bent or broke, but it's fairly, it's fairly easy to figure out. There are directions. So basically nowadays that you would, you would get it like this 
you'd open up your, your clip and depending on which way you were putting it left hand or right hand, you would put the clip in either here. So when you turned it, it, it flipped it that way or you would put it in the other way. You would have it over here and then you put it here maybe, right this way. And then that way you turn it in and unlock. So it just depends on which side the inside is on. And then of course, just your standard ring. What that photo in the community post did, they pried off this, this metal that's on there and uh, basically had, had, had peeled this metal off up and around the cylinder. That's what you were seeing in the photo. Uh, and then it comes with the faceplate. Now back many years ago, it didn't even come with the faceplate. You had to order the standard latch, the faceplate, the lock, and your cylinders. Then, because everybody was never getting the faceplates and, and there were issues, they just started including the faceplate in the box. So that is good. Uh, also comes with the screw pack with your 564, it's a long Allen wrench. Now y'all know I'm a huge fan of the Eklund wrenches, but the 564 is not nearly long enough to get to where it needs to go. It has to go all the way down the latch. And as you can see, it's not nearly long enough. So you do have to carry one of these. I actually put one of these in my, one of my slots in my wallet, you know, like behind my driver's license, there's this pocket. Uh, and I actually keep two of them in there. That way when I use one, there's still one in there in case I forget to put it back. Also it comes with a couple of spring clips a couple of little plates and then the screws for the interior let's see silver ones right here that's what goes through these and it goes into these two holes and as well as the screws that actually hold the lock body together which would be these screws we're going to look at all that when we're installing it we're going to go ahead and install a double cylinder oh and uh, last thing the body of course body comes together i've seen these brought in so many different ways people will get it apart and then like unscrew this screw and come in with like half the deadbolt it's funny it's funny oh yeah here's the directions here's the directions assembling the uh assembling the latch uh thumb turn piece for the single cylinder assembling the turn knob and rows so there we go uh, it, it, if you get it on the door, you can pretty much figure it out yourself, but screenshot that if you need to and we'll refer to it. Just, it tells you which way it needs to go. But once you get on the door, you can kind of figure it out yourself. And also a nice heavy duty security strike. There's a security plate there with full thread. Very important. I love full thread screws as well as the uh, outer front plate with shorter screws as well, which by the way, these shorter screws are a little bit longer than normal. Uh, if you were putting it on a wood frame, uh, you would want to use the security strike. Uh, another good thing about these, one really wonderful thing about these I might add, is these are pretty thin and you know, on metal frame doors, if you just drill the one inch, sometimes you don't have enough of a gap. It's some, uh, sometimes it's pointless to be able to put an extra plate on there uh, sometimes you can't use the thimble strike, which is a strike that goes in the hole. Sometimes that's not even a possibility to use. But if the door does have enough gap, one good thing about these uh, is it provides a little bit finished appearance and they're, they're pretty thin. So you can actually use these if you have enough of a gap on the door, which is rare, but it does, it does happen every so often. So we're gonna go ahead and look at the double cylinder, basically the same thing when you open it. You'll have your two, your inner and your outer, right? And it comes with steel, stainless, well, what looks like stainless steel, spacer rings. Now, if you're using that inch cylinder, you would not be using this. This is really for your inch and an eighth cylinder so that it'll reach through. But if you were using a one inch cylinder, you would remove it, use one of those spring rings. And I will, the spring rings are pretty important. But see, the one-inch cylinders, when you're using them on a thick door, uh, they kind of sink in. If you were using it on an inch and uh, three-eighths door, that'd be great. But if you're doing it on a standard door, when you use the inch cylinder, it's way deep in here, which, of course, 
protects it from wrenching, but as you'll see, even with inch and an eighth, it's kind of hard to get to, uh, period. So there we go, there we go. We got the directions. We don't need those because I'm going to show you. You've got your body right there. It tells you top. Please pay attention when you're installing. And, of course, uh, there was one thing not in that box. It does come with a dust cup. I forgot about the dust cup. So uh, they, they do all come with a dust cup. That one was missing out of there, obviously. Again, your lower wrench, your spacer rings right there, or your spring rings, your face plate for a standard latch, and then your high security plate. So all the options are covered. We're going to go ahead and uh, I'll be right back. Let me get this off. Okay, well, I'm going ahead and putting these back on here. Uh, I will post the picture of the actual lorry cam. Now, what that cam does is it, it makes the travel limit. Instead of having to turn it all the way, and when we get it installed, you'll see what I mean. It actually limits the travel up, so you don't have to turn the key all the way to get it to lock. You have to turn it a lot less. So, ideally, it's best to definitely use those. I forgot, forgot one point. Hold up. No matter how many of these I put in, I always forget. And I'm like, dang it, I forgot to put the little doodads in. And what this little doodad does is it stops bypass tools from getting in there and manipulating the bolt. So don't forget, you've got an excellent security feature here. This is kind of the same thing as like a American anti-bypass shim, except it goes on the back of the cylinder just like that that way you can't get anything through to manipulate it so let me get these screwed on we're going to move over to the old wood stand and put these guys on where's the other one go somewhere around here it is oh there it is go ahead and move everything over to this and we will get this installed all right y'all we're going to show you both the single and the double uh because they're a little bit slightly different we're gonna take our body of the lock, we're gonna take our screws and we're gonna take our latch. In this case, we're using the two and three quarter. Uh, first thing, the very first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure these set screws are tightened flush because if you try to put this in, remember we have top right here, we have top right there. Everything should be a little bit self-explanatory. But if you try to put this in with those screws sticking out, uh, either A, it's not going to, these screws are not going to go in right, or B, you're going to have trouble getting the uh, lorry wrench in. So the first thing we definitely want to do is we want to tighten these down so that they're below the surface, just like that. Okay. And uh, of course, top again, we're going to put it on. It uh, doesn't really matter which way it goes as long as it's the correct way and the correct height, you know, up. So gonna slide this in we're gonna drop this body right here and then slide the latch in just like this until it seats and sometimes you get a wiggle hollow metal doors wood doors sometimes they all have a little bit of issue getting where they need to be so there we go I think that looks good we're gonna grab these screws and make sure they go in freely they shouldn't be tight at all. Should be able to hand screw them in a little bit, but all right. So then we're gonna go ahead and tighten them down the rest of the way, just like this. We're gonna start off with the single cylinder so that I can show you how that clip goes. And then we're gonna shift over to the double cylinder. We've already got the cylinders prepped for it. In a hollow metal door, you've got a lot more flop than you do here. So in other words, it'll be, you can press it in and press it out, but of course it's way more stabilized here. Now, single cylinder. Nowadays comes sub-assembled. Basically, your bolt is gonna go like that, so that way. So when you're putting this guy on, you slip this through, right? And we know we need it to go like that to lock and that to unlock. So if you flip this around, you grab your tailpiece, you would put it this way. That way, when you turn it, it goes the right way. I'm not gonna put the clip in, I'm just using it to show you. So, boom, just like that. And if we were doing it on the other side, 
we would put it instead of it being this way, right? If we were doing it, and if this was on the inside, that wouldn't work. So basically what we'd have to do is pull the thumb turn to this side and then put that in just like that. And we will go ahead and clip it down now. Now don't lose this clip, don't lose this tail piece. You see that little notch there? That is for inch and three eighths doors. I will mention this is a piece of lumber. This is not a door sized piece of wood. So if I was to install this guy on this actual thing, make sure it snaps in and your feet are secure. Uh, I would have to clip this because if we put this on and we turn this around, you see how it's poking out right there? That really needs to be flush or just underneath the surface. If it's poking out, what's gonna happen is when you tighten the cylinder down, the back of the cylinder and that are gonna interfere with each other. So if I was actually mounting on this door, I would go ahead, see where it's at or mark it, and I would nip it off a little bit, but we're not gonna do that because this is not a permanent installation. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, listen to the loud car go by. These two screws are gonna be going into these two upper screw holes. So especially on metal doors, you wanna just get these started. You don't, want, you don't want to tighten it down all the way straight away because you need the you need the gap, you need the flexibility in uh, mounting it. Again, especially in hollow metal doors. So we're gonna tighten it almost all the way down. It's still gonna be a little floppy there. So now, since that's floppy, we can push with that, right? And what'll happen is it'll push forward on a hollow metal door. Uh, and that's what you want. You want to be able to get it as far forward out as you can. Then we're going to grab the outer cylinder. All right, and it has this wave ring. I put the wave ring on the bottom here and then the stainless ring on top for the inch and an eighth cylinder. If you were using a one inch cylinder, you would mainly just more than likely use this wave ring. You could probably fashion uh, use one of the real, real thin Ilco rings as well. But again, it's better to go with inch and an eighth almost always, again, unless you're doing it on a inch and three eighths door. So now what I'm, what I'm doing over here is I'm, I'm holding this. Remember, it's floppy. This is moving in and out of the metal door. So by me pushing in here, right, it's forcing it forward just as far as possible. So here I am pushing it forward and then I'm gonna start the cylinder screwing in and of course it being a fine thread sometimes it's kind of hard to get it started oh yeah, no okay we do need to check and make sure that we back those screws out so we're going to grab our wrench we're going to put it down the hole and we're going to get it to engage that screw Okay, let me come over to the other side. I can't work on this side. Okay. Pushing the Allen wrench in and we're gonna turn it and there we go, we can feel it. So we're gonna back that off a little bit and push in from the other side again so that, so that it holds it still and steady. And we're gonna start screwing this guy down. So basically you wanna screw the cylinder down just like you would on an Adam's right, you want to screw, screw, screw. Uh, I can already feel we're hitting something we're not supposed to be, and that is that tail piece sticking out. So we're gonna presume that it's tight, right? Okay, check it. Make sure it's straight up and down, and then tighten this guy down. And that's how you get it off, y'all. 564 wrench is the trick. So we got it tightened down. We're gonna check it and see what's happening right now. What's happening right now? Remember me saying that tail piece was too long? Look at that. That that's that's uh it's it's rubbing on it. So if I tighten these guys down, which I can grab my screwdriver over here, just like this. If I tighten this guy down, it's really gonna be a problem. But if the if it was all like it was supposed to do, once you tighten that down, it should firm the deadbolt up on the door and, and see how it's it's not working because they're pressing up against each other. But you screw the cylinder as far as possible, 
back it off one turn, make sure it works, make sure that tailpiece is the right length, tighten this down and that clamps it on the door. And of course, then you just put your plate over it. Let's go ahead and switch to the double cylinder. I'm gonna take this off. All right, now that that's off, we can see that we can more than likely screw this cylinder in a little bit more. So I'm actually gonna back this off uh, because you do have some looseness here that we have to deal with. So that, okay, so yeah, it was right. Now it's tight. So we're gonna back it back off. I think it was good. Let's go ahead and tighten it down. Yep, make sure it's not rubbing. Okay, I can feel it. I can feel it kind of rubbing on the back. And, and that's because this thickness is wrong. That's, that's, that's the main, main problem we're having here. I don't have a real deal door to do this on so we're gonna go ahead and tighten that down grab our other cylinder our other spring doodad wherever it may be where'd it go where'd it go there it is put it on the inside just like we did the outside remember to go ahead and make sure your screw is accessible right here Make sure it's backed out like it's supposed to be. And one of the biggest problems you will face with these is just sometimes you can't get this, you can't get that lorry wrench in there. And I've had many of difficult problems, because there it goes, many of difficult days uh, trying to fight that lorry wrench into certain dead balls. Sometimes it is just freaking impossible to get. So. Again, thinner door, remember that, so it is going to be loose. We can't really mimic it. Let's go ahead and back this off a little bit more. Yep. Screw it until it's tight. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and back it off. Now, on a standard door, you would definitely be tight. So this wouldn't be loose. If I was actually mounting this here, I would basically just use thicker streaks and, you, and you're like well you said use one inch you know I, I could use one inch that probably would have been better as an example but uh <laughs> that's just what it is so if i used one inch it would sink it down further but if this was an inch and three quarter inch thick door which is what you're probably putting it on it, it's gonna be it's gonna be nice and smooth like the outside is right there and also tight on the door so if this was going to be on the door i would definitely need to add a thicker spacer to make this work and of course the only other thing that we're missing is simply putting in the latch plate and uh, I think everybody can figure out how that works right you just you put that on and you do it so uh, once again if you don't know how to take off a lorry a dub bolt hopefully you watch this whole video and smash the like and the subscribe and all that stuff but Okay, taking off the lorry deadbolt. We're gonna unscrew this. We're gonna unscrew this. We're gonna get the 564 Allen wrench. We're gonna slip it down the middle of the bolt, right along in the middle. You can actually shine a flashlight down there and see your hex head. Oh, there we go, we've got it. We're gonna unscrew that. We're not gonna unscrew it all the way. We're just gonna back it off. We're gonna take a key or anything in there. You can use a blank key safer to use a bike key unscrew this All right there's one side do the same thing on the other just like this maybe a little bit more using the blank or the active key boom and unscrew your screws right here and it slips out so there we go the lorry style deadbolt installation hopefully that helps somebody if you ever run across it but uh you know it's just another one of those things you, you may not know get yourself if you don't have or if you don't sell lorry dub bolts then uh you can use any long style of allen wrench like that 564s again thanks for watching y'all if you have any questions or comments on this or any other videos post them in the comment section and we'll catch y'all next video